As we're counting the days until the Endwalker 6.1 update, it's time for me to finally sit down and discuss the 6.0 masterpiece, and whether it is in fact one or not. Bringing up the fact that there are Endwalker spoilers in this video is hopefully unnecessary, so if you haven't finished your 6.0 MSQ, you might want to exit this supervised review now and return when you've shed your inevitable pool of tears. My name is Ivona from MomsDen.com, and if this is your first time on my channel, subbing is a good idea. I make simple FF14 guides that'll answer some of your questions in no time and give you quick in-game wins. I also livestream on this channel a lot, so if you're a fan of awesome communities, in-game and other highlights, as well as Final Fantasy cooking streams, see you around. We'll start off with the most obvious feature, and that is the Endwalker MSQ story. Remember all those 10 out of 10s I gave for the previous MSQs? Well, I wish I could go back and lower them to like 7s and 8s regardless of how terrific they were, as this particular 10 is taking the cake and dull the candles. The MSQ unapologetically taps into trauma, taboo, and places where you'd think games shouldn't go, but in Endwalker it just somehow works out. No matter how tough you think you are, if you've paid attention during the past uh, 400 or so hours of MSQ, this expansion will twist, crack and break you, and then somehow put your heart back together so that you can keep asking for more. The twists and turns are numerous, yet not overwhelming, giving you enough time to recover and lull yourself back into false security until you get wrecked again. Character growth, being closely tied with the story itself, is another blazing 10 out of 10. This time though, it's not just about how smooth it feels, but also how quickly the character traits develop without making the story feel rushed, poorly managed, or done sloppily in any way, shape, or form. The fact that we meet Meaty on mid-MSQ, get to love her, hate her, and go back to somehow loving her as a completely new character is astounding to me, from both writers and players' perspective. Even some of the characters who we've known for a very long time, like Orianger, Athano, and Alizé, have undergone significant changes that we didn't know were coming, but welcomed them nonetheless, as they made the story so much better. When it comes to graphics and art, I'm giving it a solid 9 out of 10. The new zones look glorious, Ultima Thule is a sight to behold, Elpis is magnificent in its unique style and literally out of this world features, and Old Charlian is a nerd gem that got me to roleplay my days at the university that I thought I was past reminiscing about. The reason for not giving it a 10 is simply because I felt like Garlmald and Thavnir were a bit lacking when it came to details in the open world. Going around feels a bit monotonous, and even though I understand why Garlemon needs to represent a dead place, I still wish it would have felt more engaging. When it comes to Thavnir, it's not as bad as the colors are gorgeous and there's plenty of stuff to see, but to me the space feels like it could have been filled with more content. Fortunately, the roadmap for Endwalker and beyond contained the information on better auto-generated greenery, additional lightning points, and higher resolution shadows that will make the open world feel so much better. The combat system in Endwalker took my breath away, and I'm giving it a generous 10 out of 10. The new job actions feel smooth and full of roleplay, making me actually want to turn on other players' effects mid-combat. I think they've done a wonderful job with balancing most jobs to the point where none of them feel unplayable, and coming for WoW that means a lot, as I used to feel pretty lucky if at least one of my class specs would be playable and some wouldn't even get worked on for years. Demolox, if you're still out there, I feel your pain. It's hard to discuss Sandwalker without bringing up the music, and impossible to read it without giving it a 10 out of 10. The songs are so full of emotion, it's hard to get through the trials for the first time without wiping, as you're too busy wiping your teary eyes. The Shireland, Radzathan, and Ultima Tool soundtracks are one of the best tunes released in the entire game, making those fates worth spamming so you can add clothes in the distance to your own playlist at home. When it comes to Endwalker Dungeons, that's going to be another 10 out of 10, and I don't even care about how biased I am right now. The dungeons are fun, unique, challenging, and for me some required actual progging, like the Dead End's final boss and apparently overly complicated butterflies. Nevertheless, each dungeon is a literal drama filled with lore details that stop you from hack and slashing and get you to hear, feel, and think. <clears throat> the Endwalker Trials, however, will score a 9 out of 10 for me, just because I haven't managed to get any of the extreme mounts yet. Just kidding, but not really. The fights are gorgeous, but they are long, severely punishing if you don't do your deeps, as you will be found wanting. Zodiac is fun and all, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of those snakes, behemoths, and the amount of times he tries to yeet you off the platform. 
This might just be the burnout talking, but I'm looking forward to the end singer extreme to break the monotony, as the amount of times Zodiac has declared to me that he has become Zodiac and had the courtesy to drop the mount zero times in my presence has been that amount too much for me. The flying system in Endwalker doesn't differ too much from the previous ones, but I'll still toss an 8 out of 10 on it, just because you pretty much need a designated driver to take you through Ultima Thal and Elpis to pick up all the green balls. Oh, and the fact that there's that one blue quest in Garlmo where you have to follow some kid around who's quite reluctant to turn himself to a stranger, I mean, understandably so, as we are creepy, did not help my mood at all. And Walker Roll Quests are a hidden gem of the expansion that you definitely shouldn't miss out on, as they are a 10 out of 10. Each story takes you back on a journey to the zone you've previously spent some time in, further expanding the lore and soothing your long-buried nostalgia. The main Endwalker role quest that ties it all together is about to come out soon, so if you'd like to have access to it, you should definitely finish all the other role quests as they are more than worth your time. Even though we're only at the first stage of normal raids with the four circles of pandemonium, I'd like to throw another 10 at this feature. Admittedly, I haven't done any savage progging in Endwalker, but when it comes to normals, the experience is good. The pandemonium story feels satisfying, the bosses are fun and unique, and even shockingly difficult when you encounter them for the first time, like the phoenix for example. A lot of effort has been put into making the fights feel authentic and engaging, and I honestly can't see any reason to judge it as less than 10 out of 10. I'll probably bite my tongue after I dip my toes into Savage, make a new video, and call myself a liar and a fraud, so stay tuned for that. And that's mostly it when it comes to this super biased but mostly agreeable review. There are some things I haven't covered, but we'll come back to them as I release the separate patch reviews when I explore them more, and I hope to see you around for them. Huge thanks to everyone supporting my content through YouTube memberships or over on Patreon, especially our alphas like Kathy Spear on YouTube memberships, as well as Andy Men, Luna C, and Elijah Baker over on Patreon. If you'd like to join this awesome bunch and keep the content going, you can find all the links in the description of this video. Enjoy Endwalker, and until next time.